So I need to get something off of my chest about RASP. And let me start with a confession. I am an absolute freak about bands like ACDC, Disturbed, and Shinedown. Something about hearing Brian Johnson, David Draymond, Brenton Smith singing with that raspy, distorted tone, it just sets my ears on fire in a good way. There is this unbridled, primal sound when they're wailing and it's raspy and it just pulls you in. It's yelling, I need to be heard. It's full of energy and I absolutely love that. With that said, there is no shortage of raspy singers. You can find them by the truckload. So what makes the difference between all of these other raspy singers and somebody like David or Brent or Brian that are very unique, memorable, and distinctive? Well, I'm a lifelong student of voice, so I wondered that. And, you know, I know for me what it is, but I wanted to know what other people thought. So I went to YouTube and I'm watching all these videos about how this person thinks this singer creates that raspy tone and this one creates that raspy tone. And I got to tell you, there is a lot of confusion out there about rasp. And let me clarify something. To me, it doesn't matter if you're singing Judas Priest or ACDC or Alice in Chains or Lamb of God. At its core, that distorted raspy sound, that color of your voice is created pretty much with the same mechanism. It's like uh, turning on a distortion pedal for a guitar. It's what you do after you've created that raspy tone that matters the most. That's what's gonna make you unique. And how do you do it? How do you sound unique? You learn to blend the other colors of your voice with your rasp. Now, let me give you some examples. I remember in the 80s, I was a big MTV freak as well. Came home from school and a new song came out and it was Still of the Night by Whitesnake. And when you heard the first line that David Coverdale was singing, it blew your mind. It was larger than life. Now, as I listen back, I realize that David's using other colors of his voice, like the color pharyngeal and the color cry. And it creates this banshee ear piercing wailing sound that we know to this day and has made that song so iconic. Then I think of Brian Johnson, who I absolutely love. And you, you listen to David and Brian, they both sing high, they both sing raspy, but they sound nothing alike. They're completely different. What is the difference? Why does Brian sound so cool on a song like Who Made Who? Why does he have that whiskey tone, that whiskey voice gravelly sound? What makes him different? Well, when I'm listening to Who Made Who, I realized that Brian likes to use the color falsetto blended with his rasp, and then he drives both, like a punch in your face with the color volume to bring up that dynamic level, and that's what makes it so huge and big. Then I think of Glenn Danzig. Um, now, he doesn't sing as high, but he's kind of similar to Brian in the way that he blends his rasp with volume to drive the sound larger than life, but, he likes to use the color larynx EQ. In fact, he uses a high larynx EQ to create this guttural Kermit the Frog sound that's actually really cool. And um, it's not just rock and metal. You can listen to Louis Armstrong sing What a Wonderful World, and he's using the same colors to blend with his rasp. Speaking of other genres, again, rasp is not rock and metal. And that made me think of Brian Adams and Richard Marks. They're both rock singers, but they kind of lean a little towards pop. And when they sing, they both use rasp, but they also blend it with the color breath. And it gives it this wispy, husky, almost sandpapery sound that makes them stand out and makes their voices buzz. And gosh, there's so many colors. And uh, honestly, you can use any color for any genre. Oh, it reminds me, uh, Chad Gray, Mudvayne, perfect example. He uses the color nasal. He's a very nasal singer and he blends that color with his rasp and it creates this distinctive sound that's only Chad Gray. He sings for Mudvayne, he sang with Hell Yeah, and even though those were two different bands and he approached his rasp in completely different ways, you still knew it was Chad Gray because he has that distinctive nasal quality. You know, the funny thing is, when I think of the color nasal and that type of quality, that nasality, I think of country artists like Willie Nelson. That's where you hear a lot of that color, but Chad learned to use it in metal and make it very unique so that you know it's Chad when he's singing. And you know what, one more. I gotta end with David Draymond of Disturbed because I love Disturbed. And the first time I ever heard Down With The Sickness, I'm driving in my truck when I used to work construction. 
and I heard that -ah -ah, and I heard that bullet-like raspy machine gun sound at the beginning of the song and immediately uh, it pulled me in and I'm like I gotta know where this guy is going with this this is so cool and what was he using he was using the color exclamation to drive his rasp like a punch in the face and you actually hear soul singers R&B singers like James Brown they do the same thing when he goes good God you know it's a way to accent that rasp and make it stand out to me all of these singers are very distinctive they're very unique they're very memorable and at the end of the day you want to be unique. You want to be distinctive. You want to be memorable. You don't want to be just another raspy singer. So how do you do it? This is what I wanted to get off of my chest. You do it by learning to explore and play with the colors of your voice. And then you learn to blend those colors with your rasp to give you a distinctive raspy tone that will stand out and blow people's mind. This is the key. This is what you want.